Hello, and thank you for joining me today for Real Estate Religion and You. My name is Dr. Sylvia Black. I'm licensed real estate broker with affordable homes and apartments in Williamsville, and I'm licensed to preach and ordained as a minister. And the show is called Real Estate Religion and You, which airs every Wednesday right here on Time One Public Access TV Channel 20, Wednesdays 6.30 to 7 p.m. in the evening, and Saturdays from 12.30 to 1 in the afternoon. And I'd like to thank you for joining me today. Uh, you can also hit me up on Facebook at Dr. Sylvia Black. You can email me at drsblack3001 at gmail.com. Uh, you can also uh, visit my YouTube address, which this will also be posted on, at sblack3001, which is my YouTube address. And again, I'd like to thank you for joining me today for Real Estate, Religion, and You. Today, I'd like to talk to you on a continued basis of free money for home buyers, which is available on lulu.com. Just go to... Uh, Lulu.com, the website www.lulu.com, and type in free money for home buyers and or my name Sylvia Black, and then you can obtain a copy of this book right online. If you'd like to get an ebook, I can be glad to email that to you. Just uh, our website is under construction, so you can email me with the information, and we'll be happy to email you the ebook directly from email. And I'd like to thank you for joining me today. Today we'd like to talk to you on a continued basis of free money for home buyers, which talks about the free grant money that's available for first-time home buyers in the form of down payment and closing cost assistance, grants, subsidy grants that help reduce the purchase price of the mortgage, Section 8 homeownership vouchers, weatherization programs, which we're going to talk about today, and a variety of other programs. I also list names, addresses, and phone numbers and websites in the book that you can obtain and you can call directly to get information. The book also lists free are housing counseling agencies that offer free counseling on any subject, any real estate subject, credit counseling, as well as uh, foreclosure, as well as first time home buyer ownership. Um, and they can also help you qualify to get your section home ownership voucher, your section 8 home ownership voucher. I also list uh, free education, home buyer education programs in here that you can register and take advantage of. And the programs are listed throughout the state of New York. Anything outside of the state of New York, I also list the websites and the phone numbers that you can contact them. Okay, or the link on the web, on the website where you can contact and you can get the address to the particular organization that you need. Uh, we here at Affordable Homes, we also offer workshops. Um, and uh, if you're interested in, in applying for any of our workshops, which will be starting up in the spring of 2015, uh, we'll be glad to enroll you at our workshops. Please just email me or you can Facebook me. Or you can text me at 716-602-7213. That's 716-602-7213. And be glad to offer you information that you need in order to help you enroll or to get you started on home ownership. Now last week we talked a little bit about the buying process in terms of what do mortgage companies look for, how to approach a mortgage company, how to actually get started in the process. Uh, when you just make a decision in your mind, what do you want that you want to buy a house? How do you actually get started? Well, first of all, you've got to put one foot in front of the other. We all know that. After you've done what I've told you last week, and uh, basically that is um, you de determine whether you're, uh, how long you've been on your job. You need two years of steady employment history. Okay, credit is important. You don't always have to have perfect credit. There are mortgages for people with less than perfect credit. And also, you want to know if you've got the savings in the bank or how. <clears throat> Will you be able to save up any money over the next six months? Okay, are you in a position to do that? Or are you not able to pay your bills? A lot of times purchasing a home can help you to meet all of your expenses easier because the reason why you are not able to meet your expenses currently is because you are renting. And the cost of rent is sky high, we all know that. Apartments, and at the end of the lease you have nothing to show for it. You give that apartment back to the owner and you walk away, you have nothing to show for it, nothing to leave your children. Okay, there's also talked a little bit about building wealth and home ownership, which I'll talk in depth about at a later time, uh, which also talks about how to build wealth and own a home. Once you own your own home, you can build wealth and investment, we all know how to do that. But if you own a home and you only, only want to purchase one home in your lifetime, you feel, then you can take, you know, there's money to be received out of that home that you can take a vacation. You can send your children to college. Uh, you can, uh, you know, expand your home. You can buy clothes. You can, you know, get more money to buy another house. There's a whole lot of ways where you can build wealth and home ownership as well as investment strategies as well. And we talk about that in all the workshops that we are um, offering. And we ask you to, we are, our, our website is under construction, so when it is complete, uh, we will be, you will be the first one that we will let know when that website is complete.
the meantime, we ask you to visit our email address, sblack3001 at gmail.com. And please view our YouTube address at sblack3001 for more free videos on these and other subjects. <coughs> Excuse me. Now today we're going to talk about what type of home should you actually be looking to purchase. Okay. Um, now, single family home, okay, is what most people like to purchase. A single family home is intended to, you know, house one family. Okay, it can, it can consist of two bedrooms. I have seen some two bedroom single family houses. The standard across the board are three bedroom singles. Uh, you have four bedroom singles and you even have five bedroom singles. Uh, you have two story singles. You have different types of houses, uh, which I actually um, probably should have expanded on the types of housing you have available. You have a single story house, which is considered a ranch. You have colonial style homes, which is two stories. You have some homes that have basements, some that don't. Some have attics and some that don't. I prefer a house with two stories, a basement, and an attic, and I gotta have a driveway with a garage and a backyard. That's my requirement. What's your requirement for a house? Think about that and then let me know. Okay, now a multifamily house is where you live in one of the units and your tenants live in the other units. And it's an excellent way to start off. I always suggest that you buy a multifamily, a multifamily residential home that you could qualify in purchasing as a first time home buyer can be up to four units, okay, in Erie County. Okay, usually it's across the state of New York, that's the way it is. Uh, four, four units is considered uh, a, a, a commercial. And you can purchase a four unit apartment building if you plan on living in one of those units as a first time home buyer. Isn't that good news? You probably didn't know that before. So now what happens is the other three units are yours. You can either rent them out, you can you know, let your children live there. Uh, I'm sure that you want to charge rent though because the rent that you get from those other units are going to help you pay your mortgage, you're going to help you pay your gas, your electric bill, your taxes, your water bill, and your insurance, your homeowner insurance, which you're going to be required to pay. It will probably will also put additional money in your pocket in which to help you pay your car note. Uh, you may even be able to save up money for a vacation or maybe even be able to put your children through school. It's definitely a way to secure finances just in case in the event that you lose your job, God forbid, and then there's a possibility that that income there will maintain you throughout your periods of unemployment or loss of income. That's why a lot of people end up facing foreclosure because they lose income for one reason or another. Uh, separation, divorce, illness, anything can happen. And it's up to us to try to plan for these types of events. Uh, very intellectual, intelligently. Now, like I said, a multifamily is, you can still qualify as a first time home buyer and purchase a multifamily house. However, some of the grants that are available in terms of subsidy grants may only be available for single family homes. Okay? Then we're going to talk about mortgages in detail at another time. Now, there are also home ownership in the form of a condominium. Now, condominium are usually uh, like an apartment, it looks like an apartment, okay, it's in a part, it's in a building. Similar, a co-op and a condominium are very similar, okay. Condominiums are a building development individually owned apartment houses. The owner holds the common joint ownership in all common areas or facilities uh, that serve the project land, roof entrance, elevators, hallways, and the common area. Okay, the, condo, the condominium association elects a board of managers to administer maintenance of the common property. Condominium owners pay their own property taxes in their own unit, their individual unit, and, and they pay their monthly, uh, they pay monthly, usually no common charges for operating expenses, as well as taxes and share areas of the property, okay, uh, now, and, and as well as insurance. Now, it's just like you're purchasing it, it's a piece of property, but it is considered a condominium because it is in a building. Now it's an excellent way for you as a developer or you as a real estate agent or you as an investor to make some extra money because you can have a property that reaches up high and doesn't take up much land going this way. And you can still capitalize on finances by selling each unit, which is perfectly legal. Now what the extra money, what, you have, what the disadvantage to that as a, home, as a first time home buyer or as a second time home buyer or any kind of home buyer in a condominium is that in addition to you paying a mortgage on the actual condominium itself, you're also paying maintenance fees, okay? And those maintenance fees are supposed to be uh, like for the association to keep take care of the common areas. They're supposed to shovel the snow. They're supposed to mow the lawns, uh, trim the trees, 
Uh, you're also, in some cases, supposed to have a community area, which would include a gym, pool, and different th things of that nature. I would believe that that would be the only way that I would want to pay an extra fee. So you're paying a mortgage. You've got to pay your taxes and your insurance on that unit, that condominium unit. In addition to that, you're going to have to pay maintenance fees to the maintenance office, to the Association of the Board of Directors. So you could be paying $500, you could be paying $500, you know, for the mortgage, and you could be paying $300 for the maintenance. That's $800 right there. Now you can still build wealth in condominium ownership, similar to uh, building wealth in home ownership, okay? However, uh, it's, it's a smaller unit and the market value is not always the same. Depends on where you go. I know there's some condominiums downtown right here in the city of Buffalo that are $1 million, okay? Uh, would I ever buy a condominium if I was rich downtown? Uh, no. Okay? Absolutely not. Okay? And condominium is an alternative to, like, if, say if you're retired or, you know, maybe even you're just starting out as a family and you want something that you own but you don't want the responsibility of a house. Condominium will be the next best thing for you. However, I would suggest that if you go into condominium ownership that you pay cash for the unit and not all of us are able to do that. Let's see if you can take advantage of, and I'll help you when you come to me to find out if there are some of these grant programs that you can take advantage of as a condominium owner. Okay? Uh, now, cooperative is very similar to that. Co-ops are when you own shares in the corporation. A co-op is very similar to a, co a condominium, but a cooperative is a building of development that is owned and by shareholders. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> and is organized as a corporation. It may also be called a stock cooperative or co-op. Now each shareholder to hold at least uh, for one or more apartments or houses. The number of shares you own offer co often correlates with the size of the unit. Uh, for example, the owner of a 500 square foot co-op usually would own fewer shares than an owner with a 1,000 or 1,500 square foot co-op unit. Shareholders share responsibility for use and maintenance of public spaces in the building, such as the lobby, the laundry room, and the hallways. Shareholders also have some common, uh, some control over who is allowed to buy into the building. So when you buy, you may end up meeting with a bunch of shareholders and they'll make a decision as to whether they want you in there or not. Okay. Uh, and now to review your financial solvency, to decide whether pets will be allowed, if, what kind of pet you may possess. Um, decide whether uh, certain improvements will be made to the building uh, as a whole and uh, whether subletting will be allowed. Now, uh, I had worked for, uh, I was a customer service representative for this particular company and we were handling uh, customer service calls for a cable company located in the south. I'm not going to say names at this point, okay. Uh, now, this real estate broker, I, I know it was illegal. I don't know the definite facts, but I know it was illegal. Because what would happen was we were answering calls for the cable company. We would handle their complaints. And there was one call that came in from this young lady who said she had taken occupancy from this particular unit. Uh, but she was just going to be there for a short period of time. And she could not get the cable on. So we looked at it. And now what happens is when you leave and you go on vacation, you call and you said, look, I want my cable off. Because I'm going on vacation for X amount of days or X amount of weeks. And so they don't have to pay their cable bill when they come back. When they come back, then they get it put back on, then they have the cable. This real estate agent in this particular southern area was renting. I don't know if he was subletting it. He was doing it, not the person that lived in the unit. Sometimes you as the owner or the occupant can have the ability to sublet it to someone. Okay, and in that case, you wouldn't be calling us to have the cable put on. You would be dealing with the person you subletted it from, and they would have perhaps left the cable on for you. Uh, but this particular lady, she said she was calling the cable company, uh, she was calling us to find out why cable wasn't coming on. And we told her, we said, and we asked her her name, and she told us her name. And we looked on the account, and we found out that she was not the account holder of the cable company. And we told her that, you're not the account holder, ma'am. Uh, the person who lived there, they went on vacation for a couple of weeks. And they have told us, instructed us to turn the cable off. Um, you know, it's not my place to say you don't have a right to be there. And so we asked them, well, who gave you the right, you know, who, who, who gave you the ability and the permission to uh, move in there? And she told us the real estate agent's name, the company. And I said, well, man, that cable is going to be off for the next two weeks until the owner comes back. Uh, the owner specifically instructed us to turn that cable off while they were on vacation. 
So she said, okay, thank you. So then I'm like, wait a minute now. Call from seven. You know, I'm like, um, you know, don't understand what's going on yet. But, you know, it wasn't my responsibility to try to figure it out. But as you can see, you have to make very clear that a lot of cases, see, there are a lot of dangers in that too. You know, we have an agency, you know, you go on vacation and whatnot, and then somebody else sublet your apartment while you're gone, you know, without your permission. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, they're capitalizing off of money, and there's a lot of money to be made in sublets. There's also something called timeshare, which is one piece of property that you rent out to several different people. Uh, it's got to be in an exotic or resort area. And you rent it out to several people at different times of the day. I've heard timeshare is an excellent way to make money for uh, um, an investor, somebody who has a piece of property. And these are for people who want to go on vacation and they want to rent this particular place that you have. And they're renting for a weekend. And I've known them, uh, this particular one timeshare owner, they charge $2,100 for the weekend to, for this particular location because it's very exotic and exclusive. Okay, so now these are just some of the areas that you can, you know, I mean, you look into real estate. Now, real estate doesn't isn't just here in the city of Buffalo. If you look, if you research the market, you will be able to tell. There are a lot of real estate. Once you buy your house here in, in the city of Buffalo or wherever you decide to buy your first home, just keep in mind, that house is going to appreciate in value. That means that the value of that house is going to go up over a period of time. Okay, now my mother, before she passed, she bought a house, um, I guess 30 years ago or so, and it was $100,000. Now that house is it quadrupled in value. It's worth four. Uh, a little over four hundred thousand dollars. Okay, and see this with a car. Now you take a car and you buy a car for twenty thousand dollars. As soon as you drive it off the lot, it's only worth about ten or fifteen. And you're going to be paying about if you buy it for ten, you're going to be paying about twenty or fifteen on it because you're going to be paying interest. You see what I'm saying? You're also going to be paying interest on the home. That's something else we're going to talk about later on. But I just wanted to give you an idea. There's different kinds of real estate that you can own. Once you own a home. You can have access to money that would allow you to do a number of things. When you go on vacation, you can purchase a timeshare. You can actually purchase a piece of property in the south somewhere and prepare for your retirement. You can have a piece of property built. And that can all be done because you own that one home and the money that you can get out of that home over a period of time. Okay? That's why I can't understand so many people face foreclosure and, you know, you've just lost the money, all that money, you've lost your vacation. You lost all that cash that you could have been putting on your pocket. You could have been retiring, sitting on Palm Beach, uh, suntan in the palm of your hands and the palm of your feet. And just chilling, relaxing, cooling out, maxing, you know, and don't have to worry about nothing. But people, you know, they get themselves in a bind and then they think that time is going to take care of it. When in fact, you are going to have to be the one to take care of it. And we here at Affordable Homes would like to help as much as we possibly can. So we ask you to please give us a call at 716 602-7213 if you're having any problems at all with real estate, if you have any questions that are unanswered and you have no knowledge. Like I said last uh, week, we, I usually, when, we, when you're ready to go get your mortgage, we will educate you first. We'll talk to you, we'll sit down on a one-on-one -on -one or in a group counseling session, <clears throat> excuse me, and we'll talk to you and we'll advise you on what the questions that you need to ask this mortgage company. Okay, a lot of times we'll already know what kind of mortgage company they are. But you need a loan officer when you go there that knows what the bank is or the loan and lending institution have, is capable of doing. Uh, you don't want them to be hungry only for the commission. So that when they come in, they look at you and you say, ah, you know, they look at, they size you up when you walk in there. You know, if you have more jeans and shorts, they automatically think that you ain't got no money. So, you know, they, and then they might, the first thing they'll ask you for is your social security number so they can run your credit. Okay, I let them wait for that social security number because if you go to several mortgage companies and banks and you and you give them your social security number over a period of time, uh, that your credit score will drop like a hot potato. Now my mistake recently, this is the second time, and I mean it's been happening over. The first time I filed bankruptcy, I was able to bring my credit score up. Then I got a Capital One credit card, and I didn't pay. I by twenty five dollars, I didn't pay. My credit score dropped again. Now I was trying to rebuild my credit. I went to, um, what was that car dealership? I can't even think of the name of it. I probably shouldn't mention their name anyway, but if you want to know what their name is, I'll tell you. Uh, they're out in Williamsville, Transit Town, Kia. And I, I called her up and I said, I'm interested in a, lo a car. So she ran my credit once. She said, what we need to do is run your credit, send your credit over to the different banks so they can run it. I, I instructed her specifically, do not run my credit. I said, because I'm not sure if I want to go that way. 
She kept calling me and calling me and calling me and calling me. Finally, I went down there to her, and the guy that I spoke to said he couldn't help me. When I went to this other dealership, I'm being paid, I'm charged a high, higher interest rate than I would have normally. He's telling me that they ran through my credit score 10 times, and that hurt me. My credit score, again, now dropped, dragged down, it's a hot potato. So now I'm in the process of rebuilding my credit, okay? Uh, it's it's a, it's a mad it's a madhouse out here. You got to be very careful about where will you give your information to. And I would suggest as a last resort, the last thing you do. And a lot of people who give their information online are desperate, you know. And uh, I've noticed that because whenever I've done it, that means I was desperate. And I don't like doing that. I'm not going to ever do that again. But when I give my credit score to you, I'm my loan, my my, my social security number to you, my date of birth. I'm going to make sure that you're going to be able to do something for me first. I'm not just going to give it to you, oh, okay, let's hope that he can give me what I need. Let's hope. You know, hope is a good thing. But when you're dealing with the reality of the world, you have to deal with it on a reality basis. Let's face this thing on a real, real tip. Okay? And uh, let's uh, see if we can, you know, get some, uh, you know, some, you know, some houses here. Okay, let's see if we can get some houses. Uh, my cat was over there by the wire. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, let's see if we can put you in some houses now. This is income tax time. You know, don't spend up all the money. Try to hold on to the money. I know it's hard to hold on to the money when you ain't had no money all year long. You know, but don't go buy the biggest TV in the world. You know what I mean? Just try, you know, try to hang on to half of the cash that you get from income tax. Because this is where you'll be in a position to buy some money. As long as you live, there'll always be something that'll come up that's going to require you to need some money. And if you have some money saved up, then you're going to know you're going to have some money saved up so you can do what you need to do with it, okay? Now, um, as I said, we're talking about my book, Free Money for Home Buyers, which is available on Lulu.com, okay? And um, just go to www.lu.com. Now, another type of house is a fixer-upper. A fixer-upper is, it takes a lot of energy and time and, and, and resources. Not a lot, but it takes more than it would be if you were to buy a house that was already ready to go rent. Okay, now we at Affordable Homes, we have a uh, list, we have, I have a foreclosure publication that I call Foreclosures Weekly. And this publication is available to you online. Okay, you can subscribe to it uh, on an annual basis. And once you subscribe to it, you'll automatically be admitted into the Real Estate Club. Okay, or you can subscribe into the Real Estate Club and you automatically get the free subscription to Foreclosures Weekly. Once you subscribe, you'll be given a username and a passcode which will allow you to sign up online. The publication comes out every Friday and it lists the foreclosures that are available for you if you're interested in purchasing a foreclosure, whether you come through us to sell you the house or whether you go somewhere else for them to sell you the house. We offer you the listing and it's a quite extensive list. Uh, we have so many properties that are available for sale and everything can be negotiated, okay? Now finding available properties, again, like I said, we have them available. We also have a publication that you can obtain Okay, um, now we're going to talk about mortgages at another time, but a fixer-upper requires a special kind of a mortgage. Okay, and um, you, to qualify for that is the same qualifying criteria that you will qualify for a regular mortgage. Okay, uh, now affordable homes and apartments would like to be your full-service licensed real estate brokerage firm. We'd like to work with you from start to finish. As you walk into any other broker's office, a lot of times they're not going to talk about these programs. They just want to sell a house. And that's understandable. Okay? Now, when you look at a house, we're, you know, I'm not, we're going to probably talk in depth on this next week. But when you actually go into looking at a house, what are you actually supposed to be looking for? Okay, well, first of all, if the house is a new house, there are, certain, there are manufactured homes which are built in the factory and shipped to the site. Uh, there are also... Uh, there are manufactured houses that are they're manufactured houses <laughs> they're manufactured houses that are built in the warehouse and delivered to the site okay um, these houses there are also houses that are newly constructed on site okay um, there are houses that are renovated that they were previously there and somebody fixed them up we have them what have you um, now these houses when you go into the house basically you should there should be nothing that needs to, no work that needs to be done in any of these houses. Okay, these houses are supposed to be completely renovated and rehabbed. Now, however, when you do go into a fixer-upper house, there are a lot of things that you need to look for and be aware of. 
okay? One of the main things I find that it's very difficult for people to provide me with, and that's pictures of the basement. When I, get, when I want to buy a house, and sometimes I'll say, I need you to send me pictures of the house. I need you to send me pictures of the basement. I want to see what the structure is like. I want to see if there's a leak in there. And a lot of times you can tell if there is one by the pictures, if they take adequate pictures. Uh, there's a leak in the basement, or I want to tell whether there's a furnace or hot water tank down there or not, or whether it's been stolen out. I want, to I want you to take a picture of the kitchen sink and the bathroom sink and the tub, because I want to know if the pipes are in place or if the actual tub and the sink are there. I want a picture of the electrical fixtures because I want to know if the electrical fixtures are there. Or I want a picture of the meter, the gas meter, and the electric meter. And then, of course, I want a picture of the rooms. I want a picture of the roof. I want a picture of the front, back, and the sides of the house. And I want a picture of the frontage of the house. And if there's a garage or a backyard uh, or, you know, whatever in the back or structure in the back, I want a picture of that. Okay? We work for some investors out of state, which we provide those information for. We take pictures and we send them the pictures and a lot of times they'll buy the house without even coming here to look at it. Um, they will wire the money um, and we'll have a satellite closing where it's actually will be live on, you know, streaming live where they will be there and we will be here and they'll be actually able to close the money and they'll say, well, we need you to give us X amount of dollars and they'll be able to transfer the money right then and there. And it's amazing how technology works, you know what I mean? I could close, I could sell a house all over the world. As long as it closes in the state of New York, I can get paid for it. And that's a good thing. Okay? Anywhere you are as a real estate broker, whatever state you're in, if you sell in that state, if that house is out of state, you still get paid. And it's perfectly legal. Okay? Now, there are a lot of uh, properties available. Real estate broker, uh, Affordable Homes has access to pretty much most of all of these properties. And we're going to talk a little bit about some fixer uppers and perhaps understanding mortgages, okay? Um, real estate taxes, property insurance, I talked a little bit about that, okay? Uh, there are a few things that you need to know about mortgages. We'll probably touch upon them. There are different types of mortgages that are available for you to know about, okay? And like I said, different banks have different qualifying criteria. In addition to that, uh, just because one bank may say no, another bank may say yes. Each bank judges you differently. Okay, but don't, when you walk into a bank, don't say, I need to borrow money. Because from that point on, it's like talking to dog's ears. Okay, they're not listening to nothing you're saying. Say, I want to borrow money. You can't look like you're in a position of desperation. Because the banks loan you money to make money. Okay, that's, that's what they do. And if they don't feel that they can make any money, they're not going to loan you any money. That's why a lot of times they want to run your credit report first. Because they want to be in control and they want to know how much, whether you qualify for a mortgage or whether they can even work with you. This particular bank may have a qualifying criteria of 620 or above for a credit score. This bank may have a 600 or more. So every bank is differently, and this is what we find out before we go in the bank, based on what your credit score is and how much money you have available and the type of program that you'd like to take advantage of. Well, I want to thank you for joining me today for Real Estate Religion to You. And my name is Sylvia Black. I'm a licensed real estate broker with affordable homes and apartments, and I've written this book, Free Money for Home Buyers. And this is available on Lulu.com. Please hit me up on Facebook at Dr. Sylvia Black. Uh, please visit my email address at sblack3001. And visit my YouTube address at sblack3001. My email is sblack3001 at gmail.com. And my uh, YouTube address is sblack3001. How about the sister? I'll see you next week right here on Time Warner Public Access TV Channel 20 and Wednesday at 6.30 to 7 and Saturday from 12.30 to 1. How about the sister, y'all?